Yes. India is now controlled by Hindavata supremacist RSS ideology. I'm monitoring closely the recent violence in India and developments around the Citizenship Amendment Act. Uh, he will be clearly aware that it is not just Muslims that have been killed, it has been Hindus killed as well as part of the riots. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To ask the Secretary of State for the Foreign and Commonwealth Office if you will make a statement on the recent violence in India and, citizen, and the Citizenship Amendment Act. Minister. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And with your permission, I will respond uh, to this urgent question um, as the Foreign Secretary is abroad in Turkey today. Um, the British High Commission in New Delhi and our extensive diplomatic of network of Deputy High Commissions across India are monitoring closely the recent violence in India and developments around the Citizenship Amendment Act. The events in Delhi last week were very concerning and the situation is still tense. The death of one protester is one too many. We urge restraint from all parties and trust the Indian government will address the concerns of people of all religions in India. We also condemn any instance of violence, persecution or targeting of people based on religion or belief, wherever it happens in the world. India has a proud history of inclusive government and religious tolerance. Its secular constitution, which guarantees equality before the law, has been an exemplar of inclusive democracy. After his re-election, I note the Prime Minister Modi promised to continue this under the guiding principles of together with them all, development for all, and trust for all. These shared strengths and values are central to the governance of both our countries. It's a central message of our foreign policy that societies are stronger and safer when we embrace our diversity rather than fear it. And related to this, many people have made clear they have concerns about the Government of India recently signing into law the Citizenship Amendment Act, which expedites the path to citizenship for Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Parsi and Christians, but notably not Muslims or minority sects. The UK government also has concerns about the potential impact of the legislation. And it's because of our close relationship with the Government of India that we are able to discuss difficult issues with them and make clear our concerns where we have them, including on the rights of minorities. Most recently, my ministerial colleague, Lord Ahmed of Wimbledon, raised these concerns about the impact of the CAA with a senior member of India's Ministry of External Affairs on 25th of February. Officials from the British High Commission in New Delhi also raised our concerns about the potential impact of the CAA and the police response to those protests with the state government uh, of Uttar Pradesh on 7th of February. <laughs> our former High Commissioner in New Delhi, Sir Dominic Asquith, also raised the issue with the Government of India last month, as did foreign and Commonwealth officials with the Indian High Commission in London. More broadly, the UK engages with India at all levels including union and state governments, and with NGOs to build capacity and share expertise to pr promote human ro rights for all. We will continue to follow events closely and continue to raise our concerns where we have them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I find the words uh, for the Honourable Gentleman rather vassal uh, in relation to his statement here. We brought them we brought him to this, 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 this dispatch box. Uh, we made the comments, I made the comments on Thursday to the, uh, uh, to this, uh, to, to the leader of the house and there's coming here now. Concerning the sickening violence against Muslims we have seen in recent weeks in India, proposals of the citizen, uh, proposal citizen amendment act, the CAA enables the documents, documented migrants from neighboring countries to seek Indian citizen provided they meet one condition that they are not Muslim. This is first such law that has been passed in India since its independence. Next will come a national register of citizens. Undocumented Muslim migrants will automatically be excluded, held in, uh, held in concentration camps, identified and identified for deportation. Through these laws, the Prime Minister Modi is turning a hateful nationalistic slogan into brutality Hindu, and he recently said, Hindu Unka Hindustan. 
which literally translated means India for the Hindus. The, CC, the CAA has generated nationwide protests from Muslims and secular Hindus, prompting an ultra-nationalist BJP politician to demand that, these, that, that, that the sectarian hate mob hits back. Recently in Delhi, there has been over 40 people killed by these mobs were attacking Muslim homes and families uh, and taking no notice of any of the authorities taking any notice on this issue. As a result, dozens of Muslims have been dragged and burned from their homes in recent weeks, beaten to death uh, in the streets by the mobs. Thousands have lost their livelihoods. And while the Indian police look on passively and the Modi cynically counts the benefits of electoral success. For those who support India, we want to see its rightful place as one of the global leaders in the 21st century with a place in the United Nations Security Council. It is sickening to see such dissent and hatred and mob rule. So my question today is, what is the government doing to take India off this path and provide protection for the Muslim population in India? Has he raised this issue with the, his Indian counterpart and has he threatened to raise them at the Commonwealth and UN level? Because if India behaves like this, like a state with no regard for human rights and the rule of law or the freedom of religion, it must urgently be made to face the consequences of its behaviour. Yeah. Can I just say before I bring the Minister in, I'm expecting to run this up to 40 minutes. Minister. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I can assure the honourable gentleman that we deplore what we've seen um, over the last few weeks. The violence um, that has been recorded and broadcast is deplorable. We condemn this. But I would assure him that we do and have raised our concerns with the Indian government, especially when we have concerns over matters like this. And as I mentioned in the statement, um, we do have concerns about the impact of the CAA. Um, we've raised this with uh, the Ministry of External Affairs by my colleague Lord Ahmad, and we continue that dialogue. Officials uh, from the British High Commission, um, as, as uh, recent as uh, mid-February, raised um, our concerns about the impact of the CAA, uh, and in particular the police response to those protests and with the state government of Uttar Pradesh. I can, I can give him our assurance that our dialogue is ongoing with the Indian government. Bob Blackburn. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I uh, commend my honourable friend for his statement thus far, particularly on the aspect of one protester being killed is one too many. Uh, he will be clearly aware that it is not just Muslims that have been killed, it has been Hindus killed as well as part of the riots. Will he also confirm that there have been 514 arrests uh, following these riots and the police have organised 330 separate meetings with different communities to bring them together to calm the situation down? And will he therefore commend that action in restoring peace and tranquillity to Delhi? Minister. Well, I know the Honourable Gentleman uh, takes a very keen interest uh, in these affairs. I would, I would commend and applaud any action that is uh, attempting to take out the tension, the severe tension currently um, in parts of India over the CAA. So I would, I would applaud and commend any action that tries to take out the heat of the situation. Alan Smith. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There's obviously a lot of agreement across the House, and I commend the Minister for his statement, which I would agree with as, as far as it went. And I think we in this House need to be clear that we can go a lot further on this. These, this situation has been, as we've heard, occasioned by deliberate Indian government policy and targeting Muslims with the citizenship amendments. But in short term, I think there is a real role for the UK government to do, which wasn't mentioned in the statement, which is to build on the resist framework of the government communication framework in that I believe it's obvious that there is online disinformation being used within India in order to inflame these tensions. I'd commend the Government Communication Service and the Cabinet Office on this work. I think the UK is in a position to do a real assessment of the online actors and the malign actors who are, aside from the Indian government policy, which is one issue, and I would urge the Minister to step up his efforts in that dialogue, but there are online efforts that could be made against this sort of disinformation because people are at risk of further violence. Minister. Well, the Honourable Gentleman raises a very sensible and important point. I'm, I'm pleased that he uh, welcomes that report. Any 
Any uh, measures uh, be attempted to clamp down on online disinformation or the measures that my honourable friend for Harrow has raised are very welcome. We are constantly in contact over these issues. We know, we know how important this is to members of this House and their constituents who may have uh, family uh, involved in this area. So um, I appreciate his comments. Mr. Upgardley. Speaker, I, I welcome my right honourable friend to his new position. Can he confirm that he will use his high office, um, every power that he has, to make sure that our concerns in the House today are relayed to the, the Indian authorities, in particular the brutality which seems to have been meted out by those who should be enforcing the law, which was covered most recently by BBC coverage? Mr. Um, my honourable friend makes a, a very important point. I alluded to our concerns over some of the police brutality that was uh, meted out. We have long regarded uh, protest as a key part of any uh, democratic society. Democratic governments must have the power to enforce law and order when a protest crosses the line into illegality. Yet we encourage, and indeed in this case, we encourage all states to ensure that their domestic laws are enforced in line with, en with all international standards. Jasmine Koreshi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the last five years, Narendra Modi's BJP government have chosen a part of systematic discrimination, be it the abrogation of Article 35A in Kashmir or the citizenship law. Calling the recent violence community clashes seeks to normalize the far more sinister events. India is now controlled by Hindavata supremist RSS ideology.